got a governing uh, document called the Articles of Confederation of the United States of America, and that was our sole constitution. But then these Masons got together in 1787 and said, we need a um, instrument of federal power, and we need an instrument able to borrow money and repay it. And that's why they re rewrote the Articles of Confederation, and that's why they did it in secret, because they didn't dare tell anybody that that's what they wanted to do, to set up a dictatorial federal power, which the Supreme Court was invented to maintain federal power. The Supreme Court always says uh, that uh, the rule of law is the United States. Well, the rule of law is simply the rule of bandits who will control the United States. That is the rule of law. And if, if you violate that law, you'll be killed. Where are the Articles of Confederation located? No, the Articles of Confederation, I have never seen a copy of it. It's hidden somewhere if any copies exist. Who wrote the federal government has no power over any citizen of the United States? That's for me. I'm the only one who said that. What is that? What is that? Where, where did that come from? Well, that's the um, betrayal of the Constitution. That's my latest book, the last book I wrote. And I simply said in there that the general welfare of the United States, Roosevelt, passed, the Supreme Court passed his Social Security bill and all of his other bills under a false premise that the general welfare of the United States um, provides for this. Well, what, what it actually says is that uh, the government shall provide for the general welfare of the United States, which upheld the original Articles of Confederation, which said that each state has uh, complete autonomy. And therefore, uh, the bill for the general welfare of the United States is the, the bill upholding the Articles of Confederation. But they've perverted that that the Constitution says that uh, you have to uphold the general welfare of the states, which is what it says. And all of the government programs for citizens are totally illegal because only a state has the power over a citizen. The Washington government has no power. The, uh, the Washington government is in the seat of government, which is Washington, D.C., and it only has authority in the 24 square miles of the District of Columbia. It has no power on any state in the United States. That is why Governor George Wallace of Alabama uh, threatened to arrest FBI agents who were creating revolution in the state of Alabama, which he had every legal right to do as a governor of the state of Alabama, because Washington had no power to send an FBI agent into the state of Alabama without Governor George Wallace's permission, which they didn't have. <laughs> is the dictatorship of the federal government the reason George W. Bush is in office today? Oh, yes. That was simply a plebiscite, actually, uh, just like Hitler had in Germany. In, 19 in fact, uh, the, whole, the uh, Bush family has very deep ties to Nazi Germany. Oh, yes. Well, in fact, uh, the United States government in Washington has carried out many of Hitler's policies, which he was unable to do because he didn't rule long enough. He had on his plans to bomb the nation of Yugoslavia before he attacked Russia because he knew that he had to uh, knock off the Slavic population in Yugoslavia before he would be able to attack Russia. And uh, so he launched an attack against uh, Yugoslavia, and time ran out on him on June 4th, 1944, when he attacked, uh, uh, on June 42 it may have been, uh, when he attacked Russia. He had to attack then, although he had not yet subdued Yugoslavia. And so uh, a loyal Nazi named uh, President Bill Clinton finally carried out uh, Hitler's plan of attacking Yugoslavia, and he bombed it into oblivion. <laughs> that was carrying out the original Nazi program because certainly the, the people of Arkansas, where Clinton was from, had no interest in bombing Yugoslavia. And I could give you many parallels of government action in the last 25 years, which is carrying out the policies of Adolf Hitler. 
who financed Hitler's war. A good friend of mine, Tony Sutton, wrote a book called Wall Street and the Rise of Hitler, and he wrote a second uh, book called Wall Street and the Rise of Bolshevism, which uh, are out of print now, Tony's dead, but uh, the books are absolutely authentic, and they absolutely proves that every step of Nazism was financed by Wall Street bankers, and every step of communism was financed by Wall Street bankers. And the Wall Street bankers are tied into international money lenders? Well, they're tied into the consortium of central bankers of the entire world, the Bank of Italy, the Bank of Japan. And so, uh, well, these are people who've learned to work together, so they do very well. How is the Bush family tied into World War II? Well, I always have to start my lectures on Bush by pointing out that the Bush family itself has no background at all. The Bush family was, uh, <coughs> had worked for the Harriman family, and Jacob Schiff at Kuhn Loeb Company, which I mentioned earlier, uh, he financed uh, John D. Rockefeller in the um, Standard Oil in New Jersey, which became the World Oil Monopoly. And he financed the Harriman brothers in the, the Northern Pacific Railroad, which developed the whole western half of the United States with tremendous uh, uh, property rights along the right of way of that railroad, which made it probably the richest corporation in the country. And so um, <clears throat> the Harrimans, of course, made billions of dollars. And they, as really wealthy people did, uh, they had to have somebody to finance, to handle their money. So they hired a young couple, uh, a young uh, family, the Bush family, who were Wall Street operators. They became their money managers. And that's all they did was manage uh, money for the Harriman family. And so, um, by the way, Avril Harriman became uh, a world agent for the bankers, and his exploits were memorialized in a series of books by Sinclair Lewis, who was a very popular novelist in the 1930s, uh, about an uh, invented character. He called him Lanny Bud. And this was a very wealthy young man who traveled around the world on a first-hand uh, knowledge of uh, world leaders. He was welcomed into their offices and uh, directed policy for them. And Averill Harriman actually wound up from 1942 to 1944, Stalin had had a nervous breakdown when Hitler invaded Germany, and um, they had to send Averill Harriman as the, the world agent of the world bankers to Moscow as ostensibly as U.S. ambassador, and he went into Russia and uh, was the actual dictator of Russia from 1942 to 1944 because Stalin was uh, totally immobilized by his nervous breakdown. And so the whole World War II would have collapsed if Averill Harriman hadn't gone in and kept it going by uh, running Russia from behind the scenes. And of course, at that time, Russia was fighting Nazi Germany. So theoretically, Averill Harriman and the United States were uh, Nazi Germany's biggest enemies. And finally, the Russian army didn't uh, sweep through Germany and conquer Hitler. But that was done through Avril Harriman. There was nothing that Stalin accomplished whatsoever. <laughs> but nobody knows that. But uh, this is the connection of the Harrimans with uh, uh, Hitler. They actually defeated Hitler. But what they did, they laid Germany waste and it became a, an American colony, our colony of the world bankers. and has been occupied territory ever since. Both Germany and Italy... Uh, I mean, Germany and Japan have been totally occupied countries since 1945. Can you talk about your book, The Five Trillion Dollar Cold War Hoax? Well, The Five Trillion Dollar War, Cold War Hoax uh, was exposed by uh, Norman Potteritz, who's one of the big Zionist uh, propagandists in the United States. He was the editor of Commentary in New York City of the American Jewish Committee, which was the unofficial Bible of world Zionism. Uh, commentary carried very serious uh, articles by respected writers on economic and political things. The uh, Foreign Relations Council on Foreign Relations publication, Foreign Affairs, 
these were the Bibles of people in the State Department and in Congress to read the, they had to read these articles to know what was to do. And that's how they got their instructions. And um, so, anyway, Norman Potteretz published his autobiography uh, a few years after the Cold War, and he stated in the, his autobiography, which was for the elite, of course, the adverse pressure would never read it, he stated very, quite frankly that the only purpose of the Cold War was to arm Israel to uh, fight the, the Arab nations. We're in Iraq today because Potteretz armed Israel in the 1940s, 50s. Uh, see, all this uh, came out of the Paris Peace Conference at Versailles in 1919. There's a book called 1919, uh, Paris and Versailles, and that's a very important book. It tells you everything that was done at the Versailles Peace Conference, and one of the main things was a, a very vigorous Zionist conference at the World Peace Conference in uh, 1919, and the Zionists got everything they wanted, including... Woodrow Wilson, who was a very ardent Zionist himself, so he put Brandeis, who was the head of the World Zionist Organization, uh, which was a very powerful position, he put him on the Supreme Court of the United States. And uh, that's when when Wilson put Brandeis on the Supreme Court, that is when the Supreme Court became the operating instrument of the world conspiracy right there. And it's been that ever since. And that's why they voted to put George Bush in the uh, presidency because uh, they do anything that they're told to do. Could George Bush be indicted for war crimes? It's more or less disinformation. There is no indictment. There is no indictment going to be handed down. And all, all of these things are simply making George Bush more secure in office. He's almost ready to become president for life because there's no opposition whatsoever. The Democrats have been totally shattered. They have not a single candidate, and I don't know what they're going to do. And the Republicans don't even have a candidate. They're talking about McCain, who's the biggest phony in the United States. He's married to, to a mafia princess in uh, Arizona, and uh, he's rolling in money, and he has all the prestige in the world, and he has 100% media cooperation. I mean, uh, you would think he's Frank Sinatra, because the, the media swoons every time McCain appears anywhere. <laughs> Could Zionists make George Bush a so-called leader for life? Well, I think it could happen very easily because we've, we've elected uh, uh, puppets uh, ever since 1900 when the bankers really took control. Well, he's got advisors who could change that very easily and then could know exactly how to do it. There's certainly certain regulations you'd have to follow, and uh, you can make him president for life. Don't forget Napoleon made himself emperor for life. Napoleon was a complete nobody. You got to remember that the American people are drinking fluoridated water every day, so they they can't object to anything. <laughs> it's very easy to uh, uh, do because 9/11 was a step in the right direction, and they can repeat 9/11 at any time, like the Murray Building bombing in o Oklahoma City, and the Waco Holocaust of burning a church, an entire church uh, congregation alive in their own church. Uh, which Hitler never did in his worst years, but uh, we welcomed it in this country. The CIA will support any dissident group, no matter how far out you are. If I had started a religious group or a political group at any time during the last 50 years of my career, I would have immediately gotten CIA support. What do you mean support? Uh, financial support and political support. You'd be allowed to operate. And the FBI would not come down, come in and shut you down tomorrow morning, because that is only done by orders from Washington. Well, they like to have fringe groups all over the country of any persuasion. Uh, they really don't care what you believe or what you do, as long as you do something. They're uh, used to manipulate the population, because some people are going to be very enthusiastic about whatever goofy thing this, these people espouse and other people are going to be fiercely opposed to it. So right away you've got uh, opposition and conflict right away, which uh, is just handed to you on a silver platter. You don't have to do anything. All you do is turn these people loose and have them attack each other, and you've got a war on your hands.